we on? We're on. We're on. How's everything in wonderful Lincoln County? Everything's good. Everything's good. Well, thanks. Uh, Ernest? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I got you back there. Where's Mike? Mike's up front. Right. It's right there. Okay, Mike, thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. That's the best picture I've had any of my Skypes right now. So Mike's done a wonderful job. Ernest, it's good to be with you. What can I do? How can we get this crowd fired up? Okay, we're excited. I know the class is excited about this opportunity. And we'd like to uh, just let you know how we appreciate uh, it's a unique opportunity to be able to uh, talk to you Senator Manchin. Uh, this is my American History Honors 10th grade class. Uh, it's an excellent class, and I felt like this is a good opportunity for them to talk to their senator and get to know you a little bit better. Well, I appreciate it. I, I, I enjoy these sessions more than, than you know. I get a chance to inter interact with you all through the technology that we have and being able to have broadband and high speed around the state. It's very important. What we're doing today with new technology is something in your life is going to be taken for granted. You're going to be doing business around the world like this with people all over the world. And that's the opportunity that you have that we never had. So I hope you're prepared for it. And uh, hopefully we can talk about some of the things that's important to you all. So, Ernest, however you want to start this out, you have some questions there some of your students want to ask me? Uh, yes, we have uh, five students. They have the questions. Uh, and we'll start the questions at this time, Senator Manchin. Okay. Let's go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, hello, um, I'm Weston Dunlap. Hi, Weston. Nice to meet you. <clears throat> My question is, um, how does your role as senator differ from your role as governor? Well, there's three branches of government. As you know, there's three branches, right? You have the yes. executive, executive, judicial, and legislative. As a governor, I was in the executive branch. As a senator, I'm in the legislative branch. So there's a difference in the roles you play. What's been good for me is to understand the executive role, being governor, that you've got to make a decision. You've got to have basically a vision and leadership qualities, basically, to get people to go together. It'd be like all of you in a class. You're not all going to agree on everything. But somebody's got to get up and say, here's the, here's the, here's the position we're in. Can you all support this? And you've got to give compelling reasons why it'd be better for your school to do what you're asking. Now, if you can't, then you better figure out a way to make it work, or you're going to have the consequence of something going wrong. That's all I'm saying. So it's not like you're trying to have everybody like you. They just want to know, do you know, you, you know, do you understand that at the end of the day, we've got to have practical, reasonable uh, decisions being made. And that's the executive has a role. As a governor, I was a leader. I had to put basically the marker out there and the vision of what we could do and who we could be. And I had to work with the legislature. Hopefully they would agree with me. So we move in that direction. So now as a legislature, we're trying to form good policy. Sometimes the executive has requested it. Sometimes we think they have not looked at it and seen it. And we're trying to get them to accept it. So there's two different roles. But thanks, Wes. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, I'm Hannah McAllister. Um, my question is, how will Obamacare affect the future of health care occupations? Well, first of all, it's a tremendous opportunity for health care occupations. So anything that you all want to be in the health care field is going to have tremendous opportunities for you all, for the jobs, for the employment. You can go ahead and sit down, honey, if you want to. And for, for everything that you're doing, that's going to be a tremendous opportunity. Let me just say a little bit about the health care. First of all, each one of you right now, the furthest thing from your mind is health care insurance. Fine, probably. Because you know what? You take for granted you're going to be. You're young. You're going to be healthy. That's just the way life cycles go. But there's going to be a time when you look around in your neighborhood, maybe your parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles or friends of your family that aren't very healthy. Either they didn't take care of themselves, they didn't know how, responsibility, exercise, getting annual checkups, preventive care, all these things that makes for a more productive life. So with that being said, we've got to change. The old system that we had, the way it was set up, if you had health care, if your parents maybe worked for somebody, or they were able to buy individual care, 
you were one illness away from being wiped out financially because of the catastrophic effects of that and the cost. If you were born with a defect, if you got a serious illness, but you got better, insurance companies could deny you buying it because they said, you're too much of a risk. I'm not going to take that risk with you. We've eliminated those things. So we've got to move forward. We need to get people thinking like Americans and quit thinking like Democrats and Republicans trying to fight each other to have a better position politically. There are certain things that are so important that health care is the thing. Health care and education is going to keep this country the superpower of the world. If you don't have your health and wellness that you can't perform as an adult, if you don't have a well edu uh, good education and you're well enough educated that you can compete anywhere in the world, we're going to be in trouble as a country. You're going to have a hard time competing because what you're taking for granted right now, all the luxuries and privileges and everything and the freedoms you have, you don't think that the other six and a half billion people in the world want what you've got. They don't think that you've been somehow privileged or you've taken it for granted and they're going to say, whoa, oh, wait a minute, that day's over. We're coming. We're going to earn ours. We're going to out-educate you, out-think you, out-innovate you. And especially with the drug problem that we have in our country, there's not a country out there that thinks that they're ever going to beat us militarily. So you don't have to worry about someone thinking they're going to overtake this country militarily. They don't think they have to. They think that we'll take ourselves down through the social problems that we create, through the drug addictions that we have, that it'll prevent us from being able to compete at a global market and a global world. If that happens, God help us all. My name is Kayla Sowards, and my question is what could we as students do to help secure the future in this turbulent economy? Kayla, thank you. And that, that basically goes back to being fair, educated, you know, being healthy, being clean, all of those things. First of all, for you all, you've got to, you've got to want to give something back. You just can't believe that somebody owes you something or you just because you're in this great country, the country will do, the, the federal government or the state government or local government is supposed to do something for you. You know, read the Constitution. Where's my book? Give me a Constitution. No, I haven't done anything. Give me a Constitution book. If you read the Constitution, the front page, the front, the front cover, it's we the people. We're the only country that has that. We the, you own it. You own it. Do you believe you own it? If you own something, you take, you take care of it. You do preventive maintenance. If you have a car, you've invested and you bought something, how about your clothes? How about things that you really wanted and you worked hard for or you got them? Do you take care of them? Well, this is a country. This is your country. What are you doing? What are you giving back? Do you volunteer? Do you, do, do you help at all? Or do you just, just gripe and expect the government to do everything for you? Oh, here it is, yeah. Well, I need the Constitution. Anything, whenever you see a front page of the Constitution, you'll see somewhere, we the people. That's the front of everything. It's you the people. All of us. So that's what you've got to ask. What do you do in a turbulent economy? Well, you outproduce. You outthink them, you out innovate, you out create them. Entrepreneurial. You know, you're thinking there's a return and reward. You do something, you're thinking out of the box, you get something that really works. Think about it. Think about the internet. Think about the computer. Think about all these companies, startup companies. They're intertwined. So many ways. Let me tell you, as a young generation just coming into, into your own. You're going to have more challenges than any generation before you has ever had. Your parents, your grandparents, any generations come before you, you're going to be challenged more than they have. You're going to say, wait a minute, they've been world wars, they've fought in wars, they've fought in, in all over the world, they've had depressions, recessions, and you're saying, I'm going to be challenged more? How much more could I be challenged? There's more people want what you've got, more people going after. Now, on the other hand, as a generation, you'll have more opportunities than any generation. My generation, my parents, grandparents, none of us have had the opportunity that you're going to have because of technology and a global market. That means we're all in this whole world, world market. So things might not be as good in West Virginia, but they could be good in Ohio. They might not be good in Ohio. might be better in California. 
might not be as good in California as they are in Asia, in the Pacific, in Europe. You know what? You can do it all from right there in Hamlin with today's world. I never had that opportunity. I never thought I would ever have the opportunity. So that's, that's it. Are you prepared? Prepare yourself. That's all. You think you're getting the best education you can? And let me ask you if you're thinking, I'm not going to have You're not expecting the teachers and the school to do everything for you. How much are you trying to extract from that education you're getting? How hard are you pushing yourself? How hard are you working? How hard are you challenging yourself and your classmates to do better and perform better? Because if you're not going to push yourself, I'll guarantee you, there's somebody somewhere in the world who's going to push you further than you've ever been pushed before. Are you willing to be able to stand up and compete? That's the world, that's the economy that you're coming into. I know you're capable. I know you're capable of doing it. You're bright, smart, you better, but you've got to want it. I don't know how bad you want it now. That's what I don't know. Hello, my name is Ryan Coburn. And uh -huh. my question is, what preventative measures could the government have taken to avoid the shutdown? Okay, Ryan. Uh, the shutdown basically came, it was self-inflicted. Uh, that was, go ahead and sit down, Ryan. You're okay, I need you to sit down. Uh, the, the shutdown happened because of politics. That's simple, just pure and true, simple. The shutdown was over the continuing resolution, or budget, over money. A lot of people have problems over money, don't they? This was over money. And the Democrats would like to have be able to spend a limit. Continue, since we don't have a budget, continuing resolution says you can continue operating under these guidelines. So the Democrats want to, let's say, go to a trillion fifty-eight billion dollars of discretionary spending, okay? The Republicans wanted to go to 986 billion, so they're 60 to 70 billion dollars off. The Democrats agreed that we'll, we'll live by the Republican number of 986. That's a win in anybody's book. You thought, that's fine, that's over with. And then they threw health care into it, uh, the Affordable Health Care Act or Obamacare you've been hearing about. And that one social issue stopped everything. And that's not the way it's designed. You think I wouldn't have wanted to stop and say, wait a minute, you're not treating the coal industry fair. You're not treating us in West Virginia. But that's not my place to invoke pain on 300 million people in this country because of my issue. This was all about the finances, and that's what it should have been. So when you have these extreme personal issues that enter into how your decisions are made and policies of this country, you've got serious problems, and that should have never happened. So we've got to prevent that again. And the only thing I would say is the voters should not reward any politician, any public figure, with bad, with bad behavior. That means either supporting them or sending money to them, if you do something crazy and someone comes and pat you on the back, you're going to think, okay, that's all right. I thought I did something wrong. I must not have. And then if it happens a couple times and you get more friends, you're going to accept that as the normal. Even though you're so far off the Richter scale, in your inner soul, you know you're wrong. We all have a moral compass. But you think if your peers are accepting you because of outrageous behavior and that makes you popular, you know what I'm talking about. Then, then you know what, sooner or later your world's going to crash on you. And if you're strong enough on the, on the get-go, if you're strong enough to say, I, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. That's not who I am. Even though you've got some friends patting you on the back thinking you're one of the, one of the gang now, you're one of the clique, but you know you did something wrong, that's going to develop your character. And you'll have the strength to be pretty special. So we've got a lot of, a lot of challenges here. You got one more, don't we? Yeah. Good morning, Mr. Senator. My name is Katie Woodall. And my question is, what can we as students do to better elevate West Virginia's reputation and keep West Virginians working in our state? Well, basically, the reputation is to tell your own story. There's always a, I always have said this. You better tell a story about who you are before someone tells one on you. Whenever someone tells a story about you, they're basically deflam it's, it's deflammatory or it's not not too flowery, if you will. And you know, West Virginians had a lot of jokes told about us and this and that. So when a person, I, you know, towards all the mind challenges and tragedies, and I said, you know what we ought to do? I said, when I go to school, I said, 
don't even be ashamed. Don't take one second to hesitate to tell who you are. When they say, where are you from? Well, I'm from a state uh, that is just absolutely the good Lord has blessed us and the beauty we have. And the people are so genuine and good. We're one of the most patriotic states in the nation. Uh, we have fought more battles, shed more blood for the cause of freedom than most any state. And we've done the heavy lifting. We mine the coal that makes the steel that builds the guns and ships that defends the country. We built the industrial might, if you will, industrial revolution. We've, uh, we've done it all. And that little state's called West Virginia. I'm so proud of it. So you need to tell your story about who you are. After you do that, you need to make sure that we are educating ourselves to that level that we can compete at any level. That we do not rank first in some of the bad categories as you know about. Whether it's illiteracy, teen pregnancy, drug addiction, all of those things. We need to, we need to cleanse ourselves and basically look at ourselves a little differently and expect a little bit more. Uh, you can't expect somebody else if they see the facts and the figures, think of you higher, higher, more higher than you think of yourself. And on the other hand, the people that are making jokes and don't know us, I want to make sure they do know who we are and what we've contributed. So it's a combination of two things. Being able to be proud of who you are and, and, and the heritage that you have, and being able to improve the lives of yourself and the people around you. Education, and I can't, I can't harp enough on you. Not every one of you all have to have a college education. You might think you do, but I will tell you, you have to have some more skill sets. You can't think that when you get done in 12th grade, you graduate, that you're finished. If you think you're done with your education at that time, you probably are right. You're finished. And you'll not, the percentage is highly, you will not have the quality of life or the opportunity that you should have. So you've got to get skill sets. And you can get them in many different fashions. You know, whether it's just basically a trade skill, a technical skill, or a higher education degree, you've got to do something. Because the rest of the world is outpacing us educationally. We don't, we don't rank first in anything in the world anymore. We used to be first in every category. Not anymore. So that's scary. Anybody else? That's all the questions to answer. We appreciate your time and opportunity to have this conversation uh, once again and I'd like on behalf of the high school to invite you to come here and be with us if you get opportunity. I'll make sure that we get every time. Whenever we Skype, we try to always make an appointment. We try to get back when I'm in the area and we'll sure do that. But let me make sure that you all have this invitation. If you get a chance to come to DC, please come. Please come to my office and visit us, okay? We'd love to have you and show you around. Just stay at all. That's all I'm asking you to do. Remember, this is your country. This government's yours, whether you think so or not. You have the power to change it. You have the power to be involved. I would hope that some of you would run for political office to be involved in the process, or get behind it, or get in the volunteer, or do something. Don't just think you can sell on the sidelines and reap the benefits. You can't do it. Okay? Thank, Thank you. Thank have you. Have a good day. Yeah, good day. Thank <laughs> you.